Uh, my name is JT. I'm the executive pastor here at Shelter Cove. And one of the things we're doing this summer as we celebrate 20 years uh, as a church is we want to hear some individual stories of how the Lord has been moving and working in uh, different different lives. And so this morning, we're going to hear from Chris, who's our facilities director here at Shelter Cove, and uh, just hear how uh, grace, which is what we're talking about right now, has intersected in Chris's life. So Chris, thanks for being with us uh, this weekend. Uh, I wanted to open with uh, just a little bit, we want to hear a little bit about your journey. And uh, I know you kind of had a, had a neat part as you had an opportunity to play professional uh, baseball for a little bit, and that's a part of your story. And then kind of launch from there. What 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 transpired after that? Sure. Yeah. Are we on? Okay. Yeah. Uh, growing up, uh, baseball was everything. It was my life. It's what I wanted to be. I wanted that fame. I wanted that fortune. And unfortunately, I was chasing that that little G God of of me. I wanted it to be all about me. And and all those things eventually come to an end. And one day I'm sitting there and the general manager hands me a, a plane ticket and says, you can go anywhere you want. And and that's the and that's the end of the baseball career. And my life was just over because that was that was life. And so uh, at that point, I needed to know what what the heck am I supposed to do with my life now? Now it's all gone. And so at that point, uh, I had a friend that actually started uh introducing me to God because I needed to know what to do with my life. Unfortunately, at that point, I didn't quite listen to what uh, God was trying to tell me at that point. He was starting to whisper to me. Um, But I started to chase a new little G called money. And I went and I got my master's degree in international finance and I became a CPA and I started working in business and making lots and lots of money. But unfortunately, I got involved with some people that I probably shouldn't have. And next thing I knew, I ended up in federal prison. And uh, there in federal prison for three years, I, I had everything taken from me right down to my name. I was no longer Chris. I was 69552097. It's a number that will stick with me forever because that's just the way it was. And they're very good at taking everything from you. Um, but one thing that's never taken is God's grace. While I was there, I learned exactly what God's grace was about. I remember a time where I was sitting there and I was leaning up against a fence pole, uh, waiting for my, my, daily, my daily job to start while I was there. And I'm watching the, the traffic go by of people heading to, heading to work. And, and I realized that I'm free. There's nothing that anyone can do, nothing that anyone can say that can stop that. Because God's grace is just that good. I'm sitting behind bars, behind razor wire, behind barbed fences, and I'm free. And it's an amazing feeling. It's unbelievable to, to finally realize that I don't have to try to do this by myself anymore. Um, I can't say it was an easy, rocky road because finally you do end up eventually getting out of prison and then things just don't get easy after that. I mean, you have a scarlet letter, a big giant red F on your shoulder that that scares a lot of people. Um, you know, I remember lots of times you go to a supermarket and people have the petitions that they want you to sign for, for, uh, you know, for whatever recall or whatever things are going on during the day. And they say, well, here, can you please sign that? And I said, well, no, I can't. And usually they ask, well, why? I said, well, unfortunately, I'm a felon. And at that point, they usually take three, four steps back and want you to go on your way and, and, and keep away. And, and, and there, there's a lot of that kind of uh, things is out there. And I, I don't hold that against anyone. I understand it. But it is uh, still reassuring that no matter what is going on, God's grace is, is right there just holding me up. Hmm. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. I have the same experience, actually. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's appreciate him. I was just going to tell you, I have the same experience with petitions at supermarkets as well, but it's because I tell them I'm Canadian. That's the problem. I can't sign it, it's, but it's pretty much the same thing, I guess. So, they still want to get away. Yeah, they still take walk away. Hey, uh, so awesome. Thank you for, for sharing that part. And then let's talk about how Shelter Cove uh, intersects with your story and uh, how have you experienced God's grace here at Shelter Cove? Sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like I said, when, once you get out of prison, it's still not the easiest road in the world, and you you are still labeled differently. Um, I started coming to Shelterco uh, before I started working here, uh, and one of the amazing things that is about Shelterco that I love is. I was just, I was Chris again. It didn't matter what my past was. It doesn't matter what I had done or where, where I had been. I was just Chris. And then shortly thereafter, JT found out about my, my new skill set and, and brought me on as, as, as a staff member. And the staff member, immediate, the staff is just exactly the same. They're, every single one of them. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are or where you've been or what your life experience is. You are 
what God made you. You are Chris. You are John. You are JT. It doesn't matter who you are. And that is one of the best things that I absolutely love about Shelter Cove is there's no judgment because we've all made mistakes. We've all done things we, we shouldn't have. And Shelter Cove just says, come, come be with us. Hmm. Well, we love having you on our team, Chris, and you're a huge, huge part of, of a lot that goes on here. Uh, as we wrap this up, I'd love to hear if there's somebody here this morning who uh, is sitting here saying, yeah, okay, Chris, that's great. That's what you did. But you don't know what I did. You don't know what I'm doing. Uh, God doesn't, th- there's not enough love in the world for me. What would you share to them to encourage them uh, as far as the depth of God's grace? Well, I nicely, I would tell them that they're wrong. That I, I, I've been through a lot. I've, I've seen the highs of the world. I've seen the, the fame and the money, and I've seen the absolute some of the absolute lowest that you can be. And throughout all of it, now that I can, now I have the the ability to look back throughout all of it, I can see God's grace the entire way. No, No matter how high or how low or everything gets or how crazy life is, he's constant and he is right there. He's every single step of the way, every part of my life, he's been right there. All I needed to do was take the time to stop and notice it. And it doesn't matter what the past was. It doesn't matter how bad things were. He's, stand, he's still standing there, right there, right behind you, waiting for you to say, okay, I'm done. I can't do this by myself anymore. Awesome. We can't do this by ourselves. What a great, great reminder. And appreciate you sharing your story with yeah. us today.